In the supermarket, a man was pushing a cart that contained a screaming, bellowing baby. Now, the gentleman kept repeating softly, Don't get excited, Albert. Don't scream, Albert. Don't yell, Albert. Keep calm, Albert. And a woman was standing next to him, and she heard him saying this, and she, she stepped over to him. She commented, she says, You know, you certainly are to be commended for trying to soothe your ba baby son, Albert. And the man looked at her, and he said, Lady, I'm Albert. <laughs> I'm Albert. How many times have we done that? <laughs> Stay calm, keep cool, you know, hold on. You know, the whole thing around patience and kind of in, getting in that energy, you know, field of, of just kind of being present and sort of focusing, you know, it's more, patience is more than a verb, a verb that describes a particular behavior. It's something that we seek to demonstrate in our lives if we consider ourselves to be on a spiritual path if we think of us of ourselves as spiritual aspirants and we're moving forward on a path, there certainly is a quality to that, an experience of that, that requires of us to a large degree to be centered and to allow life to flow and to be in that kind of dynamic energy field. You know, it's interesting that, that being on a spiritual path for me is really the decision to live a, a life and to make my decisions in life based on principle and rather than perception, based on principle rather than perception, based on some things that I know to be true about life, about myself, about the world, rather than things that I might see around me, circumstances, situations, experiences, and dynamics. So to the extent that I can come from a place where I'm standing on firm ground, which is the ground of principle, which is the principles that we teach here, principles that incorporate different qualities and attributes and experiences, when we come from that place, then we are living a spiritual life. And we reach decision points in our daily life experience where we choose whether to come from principle or whether to come from perception of life. You know, the, the classical, traditional Christian sort of dynamic is one of patience. That's a quality that exists in the Christian religion. We may not think of it that way, but you can imagine a religion that's been waiting for 2,000 years for its archetype, leader, founder, to come again. The Christian religion's been waiting 2,000 years for Jesus to come back and still waiting. Very patient. You know, there's not a lot of energy around that. And in unity... We're not very patient because we don't see Christianity in that context because we believe that Christianity shows up in a metaphysical dynamic and we know that Jesus, or the Christ, which is what we talk about in the context of Jesus, that that energy is coming again whenever we come out of a space of Christ consciousness. That when we live the principles that Jesus taught and we call forth the Christ consciousness within us, then the rapture occurs. Because when we do that, how do we feel? We feel connected. We feel peaceful. We feel energetic. We feel loving. We have all these attributes that we are experiencing. And therefore, what it is that we expect, the period of peace is there. It's present within us and around us. You know, we are here to conceptualize and affirm and to demonstrate the attributes of God that exist within us. And they are attributes of kindness, gratitude, generosity, joy, happiness, hope, compassion, clarity, grace, simplicity, honesty, warmth, forgiveness, belonging, trust, mindfulness, empathy, humility, respect, flexibility, loyalty, service, and patience. Now, wouldn't it be great to live our life every day simply expressing all of those attributes in every encounter that we have, in every experience that we have, in every circumstance that shows up in our life, in every challenge that we're facing? Wouldn't it be great to bring forth kindness and gratitude and generosity and joy and all those attributes of God are within us 
wanting to be expressed through us as Christ consciousness. Piero Ferrucci, who wrote the book The Power of Kindness, which we did a whole series on um, a while back, he says that I'm convinced that we are going through an ice age of the heart which began more or less with the Industrial Revolution and continues in our post-industrial age. The causes of this ice age are many. New living conditions and forms of work, the establishing of new technologies, the decline of the extended family, the great migrations in which people are uprooted from their birthplace, the weakening of values, the fragmentation and superficiality of the contemporary world, and the accelerating pace of life in general. The accelerating pace of life in general. He says an ice age of the heart. You know, that's kind of chilling, if you will, to think that we might be going through an ice age of the heart. But to some extent, if we think of it in the, rather than in the form of an ice block, we think of it in the form of that we're living up here and trying to think our way through the realities of the world. We're trying to conceptualize and rationalize and intellectualize what's going on so we can understand it rather than living a more balanced experience where we actually begin to feel our way and move our way through the experiences of life and determine rather than how to fix something, rather how to be in relationship to something. To show up in relationship to something with the attributes of God seeking to express through us because God isn't present in us to fix something. God is present in us to transform something. And there's a difference. Because when we transform something, we empower the universe. We empower other people. We empower the world and life and all the dynamics that go around, uh, along around that. So life shows up for us as a mindset. And we set our minds, which includes our heart. When I talk about mind, I'm talking about the connection between the two. We determine how we're going to set that energy field up within us. We decide, we make the decision, not some advanced decision that says, well, tomorrow I'm going to be nice. Tomorrow I'm going to smile when somebody does something. You know, we say, today, right now, I'm going to show up expressing the attributes of God. I'm going to make a decision each time something shows up in my face that I have to deal with. And we all do, whether it be driving down the road and somebody cuts us off, or yesterday when I was in a hurried someplace and I wasn't looking and I almost ran a bicycler over. You know, and she wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> and I had a choice in that moment. You know, first I felt fear of what if I had, you know, but then I felt compassion because what if I was her and I, I rolled my window down and said, I am really sorry, you know. And, you know, we had a nice moment where we could have been a very difficult moment if I would have gotten defensive or, well, you shouldn't have been there. Or, you know, how, you know how that shows up. You know how it does. We try to deflect responsibility. We try to deflect all those things. But if we just step into the space and say, I want to show up with compassion, with kindness, with love, with joy, with peace, with all those attributes, we know that everything else will work itself out. All the dynamics of life because God is present in the way in which God wants to be present in the world. We have the mindset to make that shift happen in our experience. I had, um, a couple of years ago, I was having a horrible time with the crows in our house. You know, and crows are funny birds, you know, they're you know, they have this kind of sinister look, you know. You ever, if you look at them, you know, they're kind of black and sleek and they have this long beak and they just sort of look, you know, and they sit up there in the trees. Well, I was sitting out in the deck and these crows are up there and they go, wah, wah, you know, wah, wah, you know, and they're doing this all and they're driving me crazy, you know. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I'd love to have a pellet gun, you know. <laughs> That's what was going through my head, you know. 